that's one, two, three. Yeah. So we're recording there. Let's make sure we're also live streaming. And there we go. We're live streaming there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the live stream. Uncharted Days. Hey, Chicho, how are you doing? Been really looking forward to the stream. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. We're finally getting through. Uh, the set of comics that we decided to read uh so fantastic fantastic and those uh, that might be watching um after the live stream or listening to this audio on soundcloud as a podcast uh today is may 17 2020 and we're doing a comic book reading and uh, today on the menu is atom age combat number one from 1958 St. John Publications. Okay. And uh, this is a comic book reading I've really been looking forward to. I'm really curious. Uh, I've read some stuff regarding, um, you know, the atomic age and stuff from the golden age of comics and just technology in general. So uh, for me, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to take a look at, uh, look at our history and see how pulp culture viewed the atomic age rolling out right that is a beautiful cover indeed it is a beautiful cover um, i really like this and i can honestly tell you this comic book and comic books like it uh, they go through periods that they're very hard to find elder god how are you doing they go through periods where they're hard to find but right now because of the current economic situation lockdowns and whatnot I'm finding more rare comics obscure comics available for purchase and uh, I might go about uh, trying to get my hands on some of these things again I just call uh, checked out a couple of websites uh, uh, well one website specifically where they list all these comic books and Adam H combat number one this comic that we're looking at right now wasn't available for purchase for a long time like a long time months years right but i just checked it now and there's three copies available for purchase they're lower grade very good good and uh, good and good minus okay fair fair poor poor good right um and they're even though they're higher priced than what we paid for this we ended up paying uh, this is graded at good minus and we ended up paying uh, basically 950 us 930 us ten dollars us the copies that i saw online available they're like 35 dollars us uh, so they're higher than what we ended up getting for uh, getting this for but uh not a bad price <coughs> excuse me <laughs> springtime allergies comics from the 1950s are re really rare in the uk for for a good price yeah i think everywhere really uh they're 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 becoming harder and harder to find get springtime allergies gang <laughs> Woo, I hope that wasn't too loud for you guys when blood is on the streets buy comics right contrary and indicator when blood is on the streets it's a good time to invest comic books is not a bad place to be spider-man <sighs> serious allergy sneezes bless you chicho hope everyone is uh, everyone's doing good how is everyone nice 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 uh, whew, gotta clear out the eyes sometimes i have sneeze attacks uh hardcore sneeze attacks uh, one time uh when i was much younger i would get the uh, sneeze attack sometimes 10 20 sneezes in a row one time i threw out a rib uh, Oh, I sneezed so hard. I had to go see a chiropractor to put it back in. <laughs> powerful sneezes, powerful sneezes. So we're going to give everyone a few minutes to roll in and uh, we'll start the reading. 
I'm looking forward to this reading. I'm not sure if notifications have gone out or not. Um, and I'm recording, uh, recording this on the lapel mic as well. Okay, so I can edit. I can edit the audio much easier than edit the video. Uh, so, whew. I'm having allergies too. Yeah, and it's it's a crazy time when you go outside right now. When uh, you hear someone sneeze or cough, everybody's turning to look at them. Right, like total paranoia has kicked in and. People are fearful and to a degree for the right reasons, but uh, fear is never a good thing to indulge too much in, right? Um, you sort of have to go with the flow uh, and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to be uploading the cooking stream, by the way, uh, on BitChute and YouTube today, or letting it loose anyway. Catholic traditionalist, how are you doing? Good afternoon, folks. I hope you your day has been blessed. Thank you, thank you. You too as well, Catholic traditionalist. Uh -huh, that's true uh, brush off the allergies brush off the allergies right fun and this cover this thing is when I got this I did uh, I did open it up just to take a look at it the cover um, is I don't know if it's detached I don't remember if it being detached or not it was fairly loose okay but uh, and there are big splash pages on this uh, from what I recall, we bought it. This was actually a buy from uh, funds that Nicholas sent us, as well as the buy we did yesterday, as well as uh, we read this one yesterday, right? Alarming Tales. And uh, this was part of the buy that we got uh, with uh, Nicholas's funds that he sent in and me topping it off, right? So we ended up uh, getting some good purchases from that comic book haul. Awesome, going to check out and make the dish with the wife. Nice, nice, is delicious. We've got a little bit left. Uh, the feet lakes, how are you doing? We got a little bit left uh, of the eggplant stew we made uh, to eat up today. So looking forward to that. That's been fantastic. It, the Persian dishes, man, Persian, Persian food is absolutely phenomenal. Really, it's absolutely delicious, uh, Persian food. Uh, and very nutritious for the most part i mean uh, the pastries could be a little sketchy but <laughs> not sketchy delicious but not as healthy right great lasagna how are you doing hope you guys are having a fantastic sunday by the way in canada it's a lab uh, long weekend labor day long weekend may long weekend here so a lot of people are off work and whatnot uh, not you know everybody's off work majority of people are off work but it's supposed to be a holiday weekend here so the vibe is very chill and everyone's relaxing so excited about this comic Persian food is uh, scrumptious scrumptious indeed I was watching some of your uh, older comic book videos and I was wondering what's the rarest most expensive comic book you own uh, see here's the thing uh, Felix the rarest doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive, right? The rarest comic book I have is uh, Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners, uh, number 12. Uh, and from what I understand, there's anywhere between 50 to 100 of those around. There isn't that many of those around. And I missed the opportunity to buy a CGC graded one at seven that went for dirt cheap as far as I'm concerned. It went for like a couple of years ago, it went for uh, or a year ago or so it went for a year or a couple of years ago a couple of years ago it went for like a hundred and sixty dollars us or so and uh, I, I got over bit i didn't have the funds uh, to be able to uh, go higher than that at the time uh, so that's the rarest comic book i have uh, as for the most expensive um i think it would have to be daredevil number one no uh no 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 i'm gonna rephrase it might be some of the EC books that I have in my collection. I got some EC books that are high grade and some EC books that are high grade that are Canadian editions that are much rarer than the American editions. Now, sometimes the Canadian editions go for a higher price than the American editions, sometimes vice versa. Um, but I don't, I don't, uh, I haven't looked up the prices for those. I'm guessing it's either uh, Daredevil number one that we did the reading for or it's uh it's got to be one of the ec comic books that i have uh, and if 
we end up doing a reading on them when let me rephrase when we end up doing a reading of the ones that i had framed uh, because one of them one of the i have a i have a frame set of six ec comic books horror science fiction and crime ones six of them from 1952 framed in a big frame and one of the comics has slipped a little bit okay because i ended up framing it myself so it slipped a little bit after a few years right so i do need to bring those out and long time ago i promised that if i bring out pull those comics out of the frame we will do readings of them so when i get the opportunity to pull those comics out of the frame and maybe reframe new comics in there we will be doing a reading of six ec comic books that i have had in my collection for at least 30 years and they've been on my wall for at least five years or so i think um, so maybe those ones because they are hard grade and who knows maybe i'll end up sending them in uh, to be graded i've never sent in a book to be graded uh, so we'll see we'll see love it twitch need to add that emote oh which emote is that oh the little train look at the choo choo train current hype train conductor haha <laughs> chicho what is the oldest comic in your collection the oldest comic in my collection the oldest comic in my collection it may be uh, i probably have an action comics uh from the 1930s or superman from early 1940s uh in my collection maybe a batman or two from early 1940s in my collection I have some stuff I have some 1940s in my collection like so I have a you know not that many because they're pretty expensive in general but I have some 1940s comic books in my collection so those would be the oldest I don't know if I go go all the way down to the 1930s I doubt it I doubt it uh, uh, Felix I don't have many individual comics but I do have the full infinity saga book and um, a few other full volume contained in a single book like civil war nice and those full volumes are great reads by the way you got the contained story and you can read them and the advertisements are not there and it's all continuous and stuff sometimes the full volumes might be missing something though an issue that was an off issue okay graham i have sort of philosophical question about comic books is it best to just browse and pick things up that look interesting or do lots of research and seek out specific books i would say do both uh, why limit yourself to one or the other right i do both okay i mainly buy stuff that i'm interested in i mean there isn't too much stuff that i have in my collection that i've haven't been interested in having uh, there are some stuff that i buy because for me it's an investment so my assumption is that the price will increase over time sometimes i'm right sometimes i'm wrong it's like investing in anything really so i would say graham you can do both right my earliest comic is 1942 elder god yeah which one which comic book is it one of the superhero ones or atlas comics dc comics uh easy ec when did ec come about EC was 1940s, but I don't know if they were as early as 1942. Uh, which comic book is it, Elder God? I'm curious. Still waiting. It still says pending. What's pending, uh, Spider Man? The current hype train conductor? Is that what it is? Not sure. Uh, DC AC. DC AC. action comics dc action comics you got action comics from 1942 so that would be less than 100 in the low in the uh so action comics 1938 12 per year uh 12 times 4 so you're in the 19 uh number 40s or 50s for action comics yeah elder god that's pretty good that's really good felix not sure if it counts but my oldest comic would be a newspaper comic strip from a few decades back that my granddad had ah that's cool yeah as far as i'm concerned that counts there's old comic uh, strips from newspapers that are collectibles that people buy and sell 
I've got some 1960s action comics Graham says not a good year uh, for DC comics um, 1960 they were very juvenile I think during that period and then Marvel really kicked it up and um, DC followed with more adult oriented stuff I have a book from 1947 I believe that's my oldest cool spider-man my new emote oh that's your new emote no oh your new emote hasn't hasn't kicked in okay it was my grandfather's it was your grandfather's your grandfather was a comic book collector or bought comic books bam you had a cool grandfather elder god <laughs> most of my family is because from different generations and uh, different part of the world when I started co collecting comic books they're like what are you doing right Marvel was eating their lunch very shortly yeah ground Marvel came in and adult oriented more mature oriented comic books and blew away DC in the 1960s right what got you into uh, comics Chicho uh, my oldest comic books uh, would be that I have in my possession not the oldest when they were published would be the Tintin comic books that I put out a video for uh, I just like art I, I like the visual aspect of it when I was really young I couldn't read so I like flipping through the the pages uh, and looking at the artwork and to me it told a story right so I think that's how I got into it I got into hardcore collecting comic books uh, so I was reading comic books when I was young in the 1970s and stuff like this but I got into collecting comic books in my university years when my younger brother visited me and he at university was going to university away from home and he visited me and um, he said okay where's the comic book store here and I said comic book store I, I don't know so I you know looked it up in the yellow pages right and uh, and this is late 80s right? uh, looked it up in the yellow pages um, I found a used comic book a used bookstore in my area I said oh let's go check this out so we went there and there was they had a section where there was like used comic books that they were selling and I was a huge fan of uh, flash uh, at the time and I always have been a huge fan of flash and they had a whole run of flash the 1988 series that kicked out right so they had a whole run of that and they were like 50 cents or a dollar each so i bought a whole bunch and my younger brother bought a whole bunch and we went home and we started reading i started reading them and he was reading them and i was sort of went oh wow this is pretty good really it was sort of mature oriented and stuff i said wow 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 this is fantastic and then we found comic book stores uh, in my town in the sister town and we went uh, to the comic book stores there and I grabbed a pull box I found out what a pull box was and whatnot and from there it was just went ballistic with it right just loved it just loved it should we do a reading gang let's do a reading yeah that's plenty of time allowing people to pop in on a Sunday morning to do a comic book reading right I picked up some uh, comics off the rack when I was 14 or so but I was extremely frustrated because it was in the middle of the story and I didn't know what was happening yeah and that was one of the problems with some of the comic books stories and another place that I really got me hooked on comic books was uh, a heavy metal magazine right heavy metal magazine I would I had a small collection of heavy metal books in the 1980s that I love the science fiction aspect of things and the stories and the artwork and the and just a compilation of the different artists and stories that were in there heavy metal is fantastic right I'm so excited but I still love talking comics I do it for hours me too me too uh, so let me take down these uh, the notification okay I'm taking down the notification I'm gonna take down the chat from the screen gang from the video gang Boop, chat's gone and I'm gonna take out my video we'll come back after we do this reading um, and see you soon okay. oh my god this is the second time I did this bang it okay let's do this let's read through 
Adam Age Combat. Okay. Let's make sure we're still recording on here. We got everything good. We got notification, chat, everything turned off. And I didn't do my intro today, which is okay. We've done a lot of the intros for Patreon and Twitch and whatnot, right? Maybe we'll do a closing intro. Aside from that, welcome to our channel, gang. And welcome to another comic book reading. Today, what we're going to do, we're going to read Adam H. Combat number one, War of Wars from 1958. And it's by st john publications that's their logo right there it's an eagle flying with a flag attached to it st john right and this thing looks like it came out in february 1958 and the information regarding the artists uh that are involved with this the only thing i could find is that dick ayers did the artwork for this and dick ayers is huge he did a lot of work for marvel dc he was active during the golden age of comics during the silver age of comics during the bronze age of comics during the modern age of comics right he is one of the giants in the industry and um, when i found out that dick ayers had done this work um i was pretty excited to get my hands on this okay and it is a beautiful cover it is absolutely beautiful cover an amazing uh, sort of historical artifact of what was going on during that period right so instead of trying to fight the glare of this let's take this out of the bag and this is graded at good minus okay we picked this up a couple of years ago during some auctions off eBay and ended up paying uh, 930 950 us for this uh which comes out to about uh 1250 canadian okay so it's a lower grade comic or a low grade comic right it's got a rip on the cover right there okay but there's a huge chunks missing from this there's chunk missing from this the cover the spine is pretty mangled up okay as you can tell here but the comic is a complete right and it is uh at the beginning of the silver age because it's got the comic code approved uh logo here the stamp on it right and the back cover it's got little chunks here detached it's got a little chunk missing from the bottom left corner of the back cover right um uh, so good minus sure i don't know if i would give the minus part on it uh i would say good but a good minus is good enough for me right <laughs> right and who knows how many how many hands this has gone through right and this has got a few different stories here okay um it's got uh, it's got a three-page story the atom age combat it's got a nine-page story on target it's got a six-page story which is um uh, old leatherneck it's got a three-page story that's uh titled who says uh it's got a two-page text article past present and future right we might have a little look at that as well just to see what it is a uh, seven-page story i sage one page story which is due uh, and a few other stories here as well one page text story the bomb uh, one page text story man alone two page story moon descent and it's got a five page story who knows uh with sci-fi sci-fi theme to them as well and the two page story there's another artist here that i found which is paul reenman uh also has a two page story on this which is uh, the story of uh, moon descent okay and the cover is loose right so hopefully we won't detach the cover as we're reading this okay and what's the advertising exciting ant farm look at this we read the origin of ant-man or the prototype of ant-man in the previous comic 
right? And uh, we've got a little ant farm here. Let's read the fine print of this. Okay, I'm just I'm gonna read it. I can't. I'm pretty sure this is not gonna focus on this, and it's uh, sort of faded. So I'm gonna do a little tilt here and see if I can make out the all the words. Uh, Adam H. Combat, Volume One, Number One, February 1958. And this one says Volume One, but it isn't the Volume One. It's actually Volume Two from Saint John. There's another Adam Age series that they put out. Okay, so this says Volume One, Number One, February 1958, published by monthly by Saint John Publishing uh, Corporation. 545 Fifth Avenue, New York, 17 New York. Application for second class entry pending at post office. New York, New York, 19 or 10 cents per copy. Subscription rates $2 per year. $2 per year. Why would it be $2 per year? Bi monthly, especially bi monthly, two dollars per year, including postage. So, I guess it's the postage. Um, not responsible for loss or non return uh, of manuscripts, photos, and drawings. Um, when sort of faded here, must be. Uh, accompanied uh, by return postage names of the characters and uh, names names the characters used is fict fictitious uh, humorous and select them ba -ba 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 -ba. A temperature uh, purely coincidental so there's a little bit of fading here so i can't really make out the words which is part publication is part of who is uh, baba uh, printed in the u.s copyright 1958 by saint john publishing company okay and while we're reading this we have a little piece of the comic book that fell out right i'm going to put this back in the I'm gonna put it on the side here. We'll put it back in the bag, right? <laughs> awesome. It's falling apart on us. It's falling apart on us. Uh, let's check out the approved by the comic book. Let's check out this this thing they've written here, right? Approved by the comic code, uh, by the comic code authority. This seal of approval appears only on comic magazines, which have been carefully reviewed. Uh, reviewed prior to publication by the comic code authority and found to have met the high standards of morality and good taste required by the by the code the code authority operates apart from any individual publisher publisher and exercises independent judgment with respect to uh, code uh, compliance a comic magazine bearing its seal is your assurance of good reading and pictorial matters right and that's what the comic code authority puts these guys have put in there actually I don't think we've ever read one of these things we've read a fair bit of comics that had the comic code authority seal on it but we never I don't remember reading uh, this thing before and everything here that they say is basically BS right because it's all about censorship it's not about moral code or anything it's about preventing people from reading things that the centralized power does not want them to read right it's about fear and control and good riddance to the comic code okay uh, aside from that let's read a little atomic age historical piece the atom so the first story anyway atom age combat and again, most of the artwork here, I believe, is by Dick Harris, or at least this one is for sure. Okay. And a beautiful cover, and Dick Harris was fantastic, right? Nice. 
Thank you, Elder God. Reminder, reminder. Please keep politics to the politics. The age we are now living in will go down in history as the Adam age. Right? That's the little note there. Beautiful piece of work, eh? Look at that art. Great perspective, right? It has been ter terrifyingly powerful weapons placed at man's disposal by science. Let's read this in a row, right? The age we are now living in will go down in history as the Adam age. It has been terrifyingly, it has seen terrifyingly powerful weapons placed at mankind's dispos uh, disposal by science. Click. Oh, look at this. The name of the, the towns are in there. New York. I guess that's Los Angeles on the buttons. Take a look. Washington. London, right? So they're pressing a button for New York and we got a rocket taking off. For the sake of global survival, it is the common duty of all, all of us to work incessantly to prevent the suicidal thermal nuclear holocaust of total war in the atom age From. this comic book is total politics <laughs> look at the ostrich he's got his head in the head in the ground Not sure if you can hear the rain outside nice rainy Sunday right what a better time to read a comic book right this does not mean we can relax our vigilance until adequate diplomatic safeguards have been devised to ensure lasting peace our armed forces must keep developing new weapons They must keep reshaping their units and their tactics. Look at that. Ostrich with his head in the ground. We must not be ostriches and bury our heads in the sand in the face of danger. Wow, beautiful depiction of the rocket, eh? To, per to permit our atomic muscles to grow flab, flabby while striving our peace, striving for peace would nearly invite atomic attack by an enemy stronger and less responsible than ourselves. In keeping with the realistic approach, we, the editors, feel we are performing a significant service by presenting dramatic stories of limit, limited th thermal nuclear battle.
these stories will be reassuring in so far as they will demonstrate how amazingly powerful and fantastically in ingenious our country's atomic defenses are. different types of missiles and rockets they're showing at and by giving an insight into these weapons terrifying potential terrifying potential the stories will reinforce your fervent desire to help prevent an all-out war in the atom age Kavon. these stories are not science fiction no matter how fantastic the weapons vehicles and devices you are about to see in the following pages appear to be they are authentic or based on fact some already in use others in their final stages of development explosion this is the atom age the unbelievable has already begun to come true heavy introduction wow that was a three-page intro to this comic what a serious intro. Wow. They introduce it with a rocket in its hangar and someone clicking a button to send the rocket to New York, right? So right off the bat, we there's sort of a propaganda mechanism here in play right the fear factor kicking in but what a brilliant introduction to a comic book about the nuclear weapons from 1958 beautiful beautiful on target the first story let's have a read through this the, as you can tell when I'm reading this gang uh, just because the letters are a little bit uh, the typeset is a little bit uh, the letters aren't coming out too clear uh, so I'm stumbling on the words a little okay so I might show you guys the pictures and then bring the letters to my eyes to be able to read them properly but I'll try to do my best okay the story on target okay so let's read this text that's a tank blowing up oh actually it's more than a tank blowing up it's everything blowing up that's like a nuclear explosion in the background i believe serious mushroom cloud happening right or is that just a tank blowing up let's read this we're really rolling sir the enemy's falling back everywhere i know call now and that's exactly what has me worried colonel i guess i should pronounce that colonel and that's exactly what has me worried let's read this a limited atomic war has broken out between the United States and another country. Both sides have agreed to use only low yield, clear atomic ammunition and to concentrate on established military targets. And they have clearly defined the war's political objectives. But as of today, 
the war heretofore so heretofore so carefully localized threatens to take a new turn so that sets the stage for us so that was a limited tactical nuclear weapon something that has been uh, basically kicked into high gear in development for for our time in the last 10 years right new budget was uh, came out about 10 years ago a trillion dollars worth i believe there's a nuclear explosion right there we've been pushing the enemy around so much lately he knows he's losing well what if out of desperation he breaks his pledge to keep this war limited editors note in atomic combat airborne tv will take the place of battle reports instead of having to wait for news from the front commanding officers will be able to watch the battle as it unfolds in many miles away wow take a look at this amazing this is 1958 right this little editor's note science fiction telling us that on the display commanders will be able to watch the war in real time which is exactly what we've been witnessing for the last couple of decades right beautiful beautiful right what if he decides to risk everything on one last wild knockout punch what if he starts dropping some of the big a bombs he has stockpiled But he couldn't do that, sir. Both sides have ins inspection teams and each other strike bases. Couldn't he? What if he's building a new strike base where our inspectors can't spot him? The guy says, You mean? That's just what I mean. The one place where one inspector couldn't possibly get close to the enemy is right around here right behind his battle lines he's looking at a map but we've had continuous reconnaissance sir and so far all reports have been negative not all of them colonel what about reconnaissance force d the report hasn't come in yet what does that say command post and uh, army headquarters the sign says right so they're in their headquarters watching the war unfold just then who's that coming in now he may be a courier from force d sir editor's note a helicopter weighing less than a man and powered by rockets has been tested for use by the armed forces it has a speed of 70 miles per hour and a range of 30 miles and has already been nicknamed the neutral what does that say hot rod it has already been nicknamed the hot rod I wonder if that's uh, for real 1958 take a look at this take a look at this look at the courier on this guy look at that we have stuff like that around now 1958 sir special courier from force d reporting as of 25 minutes ago sir 
So the guy's flying around a little one-man helicopter, right? As of 25 minutes ago, sir, no new enemy installations whatsoever have been sighted. So he's reporting back. But sir, the enemy appears very sensitive in our sector. Our force was engaged in short distance from its starting point and thrown back by superior numbers uh, consequently. Reconnaissance of the sector is incomplete, the courier says. You hear that? The colonel says. If my hunch is right, that's the spot. They're building a secret strike base somewhere in that sector. But look at the size of the sector, sir. We can't saturate bomb it. With this limited limited war setup, we need a pinpoint target. Pinpoint target, eh? All right, if it's there, I'll get it for you. I'll start working on it right now. He grabs the phone. Who is he calling? Tell the chief signal officer, want camera drones over every square inch of this sector. I want a complete set of aerial photo photographs within the hour. He's telling someone and looking at them through video he's talking to them and looking at them through video and the guy's saluting acknowledging the order from 1958 from there go the drones right 10 minutes later sees the launching of the first group of drones the the small radar tracked remote control planes each with a mounted aerial reconnaissance camera wow there go our flying spies sir here's hoping they come back with the information we need yes for the whole world's sake here's hoping he says now comes the period of wait waiting of time that keeps dragging dragging along with insufferable slowness He's smoking a big fat stogie look at that they're video conferencing each other until finally nerves begin to crackle where are those drones what's keeping them why aren't they back yet sorry sir all i can say is no sign sign of them the enemy must have shot them down sir video chatting live streaming video conference we're getting warm they have something they're hiding in that sector and my hunch tells me that something something is a strike base now all we have to do is pinpoint the base and destroy it pinpoint a base that you just have a hunch about sir how soldier asks q 
keep sending out groups of drones at regular intervals one of them has to get through and the guy in the video conference is saluting him right trippy from 60 years ago a comic book from 62 years ago wow there goes there goes more taxpayers money down the drain the soldiers say the enemy would give their uh, eye teeth eye teeth to bring down one of one of those all in one pieces all in one piece from what i hear they're way behind us when it comes to autonomous uh, automatic recon equipment a r e automatic recon equipment that's what they're referring to as the drones they got propellers and they're jet powered as well eh? look at that super cool later just heard from the signal officer sir no returns yet on any of those drones any orders sir tell him to keep dispatching them time's running out and until we think of something else those drones are our only chance all throughout the night drones are launched at regular intervals these are equipped with special infrared cameras but once they are swallowed up by darkness behind the enemy lines they meet the same fate as those that have gone before them not one returns at dawn sir you haven't slept all night don't talk to me about sleep colonel not yet not until that targets pinpoint what about the one-man patrols we sent out during the night anything coming from that from them yet no sir not yet if one of them would only come come in with a prisoner if we could only interrogate interrogate one prisoner from that sector that's a big if sir what about the drones shall we keep sending them yes keep sending them wow look at that u.s army at that moment miles away a young u.s officer out alone in a tri trifibious jeep spots an enemy tank uh oh disable enemy tank that baby's a sitting duck for one of my rockets so try phobias so it flies drives and uh, floats on water editors note a try try phobias jeep capable of travel over ground and water and through the air is currently under development wow look at that thing fly awesome if luck's on my side one of the crew will still be in shape to talk after i let go let go at her the general wants a prisoner Let's thinking look at this Boom. blows up the tank Boom. 
who could survive that? Let's find out. Climbs down. Got him, but I'm not in the clear yet. I've been spotted by enemy artillery. Boom, boom. They have me bracketed. Come on, you trifib. Let's hightail it out of here. escapes looks like it look at that later back at headquarters good work lieutenant the person prisoner say anything on the way in he's been acting very cocky sir says he won't be a prisoner for long that our goose is about cooked shown his face yet so we don't know what nationality is there oh we see the face now look at that you start talking we want to know all about the new installation set up in your sector it is no use general you will get as little information from me as you got from your drones haha <laughs> you know about the drones do you you saw them shot down did you shot down no the prisoner says and he's sweating eh i wonder what they did not shot down then what happened to them I talk no more. I have said too much already, the prisoner says. What could he have meant by their not having been shot down, sir? Could be they've figured out a way to ground them without shooting them down. Could be. I've heard the enemies short on drones, drone type equipment. Could be this is the lead. We need to pinpoint that target. Now get moving on the double. I want these messages sent at once to both the chief signal and ordinance officers. A few hours later, uh oh, there go some more drones. That general of ours has a stubborn streak a while a mile wide dollars to donuts says none of them come back either you know the chance you're taking sir what if your hunch about that secret strike base is right and the big bombs the enemy is piling up there aren't clean no not at this stage of the game the enemy wants to put over a sneak lab jab to get us off balance so they can regroup here on the field they're not crazy enough to fool around with fallout bombs not yet i hope meanwhile at a certain new installation behind the enemy's lines look the americans have sent us a gift of more drones they're saying huh the americans are as stubborn as they are stupid shall we bring these down as we have brought the others sir silhouette of the enemy look at their faces i'll show you guys the other panel look at the silhouette on these guys yes of course bring them down after our uh surprise the nature of the war will undoubtedly change it will be pursued uh pursued more vigorously shall i say and in such a war we will need every piece of extra equipment 
we can get. Look at these faces. But it will mean delaying the surprise we are about to spring on the Americans, sir. Our bombers are scheduled to take off in a few minutes. Bring them down, I said. The guy says. Oh, look at this. They got a little equipment here. Bzzz. Some kind of uh, electromagnetic ray or something. Signal jamming, maybe. Sprut, sprut, sprut. Pa, 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 pa. They're shutting them down. The propeller is not moving as fast. Air bubbles in the jet coming out. Put, 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 put. They're stalling them. Look at that. to the hangar with them clear the field it is time for just then bro the drone blows up Blam. there were Trojan horses they rigged the drones to blow Boom. look at the symbol on the planes eh? Your hunch works, sir. The enemy was bringing down the drones right at the secret strike base site. This is the U.S. Army now. It f it figured that they'd have their best anti-reconnaissance equipment where it counted most. Look at that big stuff go up. Will you? That's chain reaction for you. And what's more, no fallout no fallout how could there be no fallout from that look at the mushroom cloud there look at that thing Boom. oh it might not be a mushroom cloud it's a gigantic explosion look at that well they got their special goggles on funny how things work out bet they thought right up to the last minute that they were putting one over on us bringing those drones down the way they brought down all the others if you hadn't made uh, signal and ordinance work together to uh, mount warheads instead of cameras on that last batch of drones sir the enemy might very well have had had the last laugh but instead they pinpoint pinpointed our object objective for us they brought our bombs right down on target for us next thing i want them to do for us is to is to sue for peace and something tells me they'll they be doing that before long the end of that story wow I was not expecting the story to be this intricate, this. I wonder if we have triphobias. They must have triphobias vehicles. For sure. Let's go to the next story. Old Leatherneck. Old leather neck. Let's have a read of the the box caption here. At the start of the fifth week of the stalemate atomic war between our forces and the ruthless enemy, the Pentagon makes a surprise move that leaves the world gasping with shock. The command of our forces in the field is handed over to one military man who has always refused to accept the facts of atomic combat 
Lieutenant General Joseph Hutton of the U.S. Marine Corps, old Leatherneck himself. This is a three-star general. And he's got the three stars on his shoulders as well. Old Leatherneck. Let's see what Old Leatherneck's about to do. Even as Old Leatherneck enters the headquarters compound, the night, nightly enemy barrage that has been the big factor in holding us up can be heard shrieking down on our forward installation. The same mysterious barrage that has come night after night, originating from some unknown emplacement that ceaseless reconnaissance has been unable to locate. If we could only find out where they're throwing that stuff from, that's a big F. And if our base uh, brass doesn't bypass it soon, we're going to be in bad shape. He says. Look at the strut on that old war horse, will ya? Mr. Marine himself has landed, and the situation's uh, more snafud than ever. The two soldiers are talking about the general. If there's one man who can be signaled out as having always been unilaterally opposed to the innovation both tactical and weapon wise that have been that have been imposed on our armed forces with the advances of atomic science it is the lantern-jawed old fighter men fight wars has always been his slogan not machines and he has never hesitated to to bellow his anti-atom triads for all trade tra turades anti-atom turades for all the world to hear this is leather neck okay i get the picture the enemy keeps us tied down while he builds up for a big push. So our jobs to find his mystery in, in placement fast. Have one of those newfangled tri-fibs tri here at dawn. I'm going out myself for a look-see but sir you can't after all sir you're a general general officer oh leather neck I'm a marine first colonel and marines don't sit on their hands in a snarled up situation like this one you just have that trifib here at dawn I'll do the rest at dawn sir i wish you would consider if you were to be captured sir stow it and get out of the way colonel i'm taking off so he sits down in one of those uh tri -fibs and takes off look at him go later over the over the enemy lines this looks like a good spot to land as any oh he's actually gonna land there's 
the enemy soldiers. He lands right in the enemy territory. Look whom we have for a prisoner, an American general. Up with the hands. Oh. oh. Up with the hands, I said. Be glad to only. Oh, he punches him. My knuckles are coming along with them. Wow. He punches the enemy in the face. What a cowboy. What a cowboy. Look at that. He's in a fist fight with the enemy. He gas fights like a tiger, but we are too many for him. And they're swarming him. Beautiful panel, by the way. Look at the motion in that. back to headquarters with him our intelligence officers should find interrogating him most interesting they subdued him oh they captured them look at it guy old leather neck's not too smart look at this crazy later so the famous fighter general hatton falls into the enemy's hands and very first day after his arrival a good joke is it not that's the interrogator talking to the general yeah and looks like the jokes on me all right the general says That your war department even permitted you to approach the battlefield proves their idiocy the whole world knows knows you for a stubborn old fool who lives in a dream world where battles can still be won by the bravery of individual marines But this is not a dream world, General. This is a real war in the Atom Age. And you are an incompetent misfit. Your immediate capture proves it. This is all the enemy talking to the General. Look at this. Yeah, guess only an old fool could have thought he could find that mystery emplacement of yours all on his own the general says huff but of course and now general hatton you shall learn to what an extent your whole army is comprised of fools the emplacement that your reconnaissance troops have never been able to find has always been right under your noses right here in in sector 912 right inside the hill here hill there barely a meter away from your own front lines it is a new type uh, flashless atomic motor general and there are two excellent reasons for it never having been found firstly because of the most ingenious atomic power camouflage contra contravance ever developed and secondly because perfectly synchronized widely dispersed atomic cannon well in the in the rear always fire at precisely the same moment as the close-up mortar ah, so they're synchronizing their attack 
And so, since the new type mortars are both flashless and soundless, their whereabouts have always remained a mystery. Ingenious, eh, General Hatton? Ingenious enough to fool even those Americans who accept the changes in modern warfare, eh? So what chance did you have, you, a man who still lives in, as you Americans say, the, the horse and buggy days? A quarter of an hour later, at the American headquarters, here it is, sir, the message that has come through from Washington, all decoded, <laughs> as if we didn't have enough to worry about with old Hatton on his, on the missing, missing in action list. Now, you're sending fire orders from Washington? All right, pass it, pass it on down. Heaven knows what good will do, but pass it on down. This is an American soldiers. All batteries zeroed in, zero in, and ready to fire simultaneously, as per special order, sir. Let him rip. Let's get this crazy fire mission over with as soon as possible. So they gave him some uh, coordinates to fire on it. Eh? Look at the explosions. There it goes, that hill in sector 912 is going sky high. I still wish I knew why Washington ordered it, pounded. What sort of information could they have been acting on? Looks like the joke's on you, huh? Your troops will be able to sweep forward now won't they the general's laughing why you no the americans will overrun us soon if we harm him it might go hard with us well what do you know looks like i'm going to s squeeze through with a whole skin after all didn't think much of my chances when i purposefully let myself be captured oh leather neck says Want to see what the gimmick was? Here it is. A new type long range atomic radio strap inside my helmet beamed right back to Washington. We figured at the Pentagon that with me as your prisoner, you'd start boasting and give the location of the emplacement anyway, uh, emplacement away. But for you to use such a device it is contrary to your whole personality, to all your speeches. A two-way radio helmet with a one-mile range has already been developed by the army. A two-way check this out. A two-way radio helmet with a one-way range has already been developed by the army. technology update right yeah let's get this focused come on there we go that's just what our counterintelligence wanted all our enemies to believe that's why i've been putting on the act all these years so it might be used in a snarled up situation like this one old leatherneck says marines fight to win you know with bare knuckles or with gadgets borrowed from buck rogers marines fight to win the end 
I was wondering why he still had his helmet on, right? Very crazy. Fun story. What's this ne next one? Who says? This one is a three page story. Let's have a read through this one. Let's see what this is all about. Let's see what this is all about. Our third, or I guess fourth story. It's fourth segment, I guess. Who says? How many stripes does this guy have? This guy has three stripes. I don't know what the rank of that is. Is that a colonel? I don't know. Three stripes in, in the US. What does that mean? So the soldier is hiding behind rocks. And I'm assuming the silhouettes are the enemy. There's at least four of them chasing him. Sergeant. Nice. We're live streaming this and I'm checking the chat. And we have ex-military in the chat and he's telling us what it is. SGT, I'm assuming that's a sergeant. So let's see what the sergeant says. And thank you, Elder God. Who says this is an Atom Age combat? Oh, if I could only lay my mitts on the Madison Avenue pencil pusher who dreamt up that fancy phrase, I cram it right down his huckster's throat, one word at a time. Does this look like push button warfare to you? Where is the button I'm supposed to push now? The button to stop them from finding me? Where is it, huh? The sergeant says, right? He's trying to hide from the enemy. Oh, he's nervous. Look at that. Look at that. Where were all those magic buttons hiding clear through this whole snarled up mission? The way, the way me and my squad dropped down here behind enemy lines. Oh, he's having a flashback was no different from the drops the GIs made in the last war flares below the gorillas right now on time so they're parachuting down from the planes they squad in him when we hit terra firma and I mean hit where was the button to to cushion the impact oh, they're landing those gorillas were good joes but there was no time for speeches our mission was to liberate their captured leader so they could start raising cain again deep in the enemy enemy rear thank heavens you have you have Cut the cut the hearts and flowers, mister. Let's get moving. <laughs> the gorillas are trying to thank them. He's saying, cut the cut the hearts and flowers, mister. Let's get moving. The soldier, the sergeant says. The sooner we finished, the sooner we could get back behind our own lines. But there were no push buttons to keep our feet dry as we slugged through the mud that night. No button to keep the uh, bram brambles from tearing at our faces. Keep moving, keep moving. Look at that silhouette, beautiful silhouette and none to help us when we reached the joint where the guerrilla leader was an unwilling tenant. Was that a robot that tossed a grenade that made Swiss cheese out of that guardhouse wall? No siree, that was me. 
throws the grenade. I don't think the grenade is supposed to flame like that. And that was no push button fire control center directing the covering fire as the guerrilla leader ran through. No, sir, that was me again. <laughs> Look at the guerrilla leader <laughs> just running. <laughs> looking at the sergeant run for your life and then after the gorillas and their leader still smiling thanks had scram scrammed down the road where was that big brain univac then to warn me that just a few hundred yards ahead on the way to our pickup one of my men would step on a enemy trip flare oh and the enemy sees the flare goes up oh they're surrounded look at that look at that every man for himself run for it he says they're surrounded being bombarded or fired on right who knows how long i've been running all i know is that i must have fallen asleep on this ditch and now they're closing in on me so we're into the present now I'll put up a fight, but oh, if I could only get my mitts on. Oh, he's all pissed. Sergeant Leblonsky. Psst. Is that you, Sarge? He's got some of his men coming up behind them. Or no, not behind them. The people in the silhouette here that he didn't know who they were. They're soldiers. He's all happy now. How did you ever? One of your men reached the pickup. If there were, if this were the last war, you'd have been forced to leave the rest of you behind. But with all these special Atom Age recon vehicles, we've been able to set up a temporary base back here until you're, you're all rounded up. Uh -huh. so the technology helped them who says this is Adam age combat I say bub I say he's all happy technology wins yay <laughs> I guess he forgot about throwing the grenade and whatnot past present and future oh it's just a story I sat there far underground below the buried city le city level my finger resting on the pulsing time my other hand holding the lever okay so it's just a story I thought uh, this two-page write-up would have been the way war was fought in the past how it's being fought in the present and what the future holds but it doesn't look like it it's totally I'm just gonna skim this gang really quick you know what one way that I've learned to speed read that I learned at university was to read the first paragraph and the last paragraph of any text and read the first sentence of every paragraph so let's have a read through it and see if it gives us an idea of what this is right past present future I sat there far underground below the buried city's level my fingers resting on the pulsing time my other uh, timer my other hand holding the lever that would send another titan six guided missile to its destiny i thought again let me bring this up maybe you guys can read it together with me All right this is easier to read than the word bubbles All right i thought again of this mechanism under my control carrying its huge freight of con cobalt bomb 10,000 miles at more than 30,000 miles per hour 
Even here, so deep beneath the surface, the walls quivered as though in uh, revulsion at the enemy missiles exploding above. Above, a word we used for Earth's surface. What was it like out there, I wondered. For two centuries now, man has not been that has not seen that surface heaving and poisoned heaving and poisoned with noisome radi radioactive fog that's the first paragraph the first sentence the timer pulsed faster the bell rang i pulled the lever so this is a story this isn't going to work for speed reading they had another they had other they had other atomic powered weapons too in those early days submarines powered by atomic fission ships and jet, jet planes they had dreamt of a golden age for mankind when he had found the secret of the atom they had discovered a force of abysmal destructiveness and they turned it to the elements of peace and aid to mankind the timer pulsed beneath my fingers finger breaking my verily alerting me re reverie reverie alerting me first they had fought on land and sea and in the air there had been there had been the terrible quote seven day atomic plague when whole cities had vanished from the face of the earth slowly the world began to rec recover to build again there came a day when a sneak attack was launched and the world was once again embroiled in war time passed as the 20th century war to a close and our century began the old stories told us of what what it had been like before the war stories that were like fairy tales so 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 unreal were they so different from what we knew and had experienced we're going to read this last paragraph thing last paragraph in a sentence let's read this one and man had forgotten uh, and man had forsaken all that had crawled beneath the earth to a new existence a new environment and sparked by a radiation effects upon the genetic structure mutants began to appear among among men as nature tried to find the changed species to fit this changed environment giants midgets strange and weird freaks appeared and as generations passed were eliminated finally nature found the answer in polyploidy and mankind cells his chromosomes and genes mutated and multiplied until the ordinary double chromosome began chromosomes began became tripled and each man became a triloid or tetraploid and so a new species of mankind was established in a single generation a species to fit his environment and all men now are like me the timer pulsed beneath my finger the bell sounded it was time to pull the le lever again triploid or tetraploid triploid or tetraploid what does that mean triploid or tetraploid cool that's a good sci-fi couple of page story eh? I sage let's take a look at this one this is a seven page story I sage okay let's read this Read that. 
good reason to be proud for of all the military con uh, contravances placed at mankind's disposal by science in this atom age i sage am the most unbelievably genius I am not alone in this high elevation if others did not esteem me as highly as as I do myself they would not cloak my inner mysteries with top secret secrecy would they they would not hide me in the concrete windowless block block houses would they There are many of me. I am a far long, far flung network covering key military bases all over the country. My full name is semi autonomous, semi automatic ground environment. I am the electro electronic system on which this country's the country depends to deal with the threat of enemy bombers what's his name again what's the autonomous semi-automatic ground environment semi-automatic ground environment sage that's what it is semi-automatic ground environment i sage right semi-automatic ground environments okay sage each of me contains 123 miles of wire and 58,000 separate tubes mine is the most marvelous memory at work for all that flies in the world today it is only fitting that sage the abbreviation of my full name should mean wise or judious ju judicious wise or judicious how do i operate i shall try to explain slowly and simply but do not be discouraged if you fail to comprehend after all you are only human and i am sage look at the old school computer little cards every day thousands of scattered facts about all aerial activity over this country and its approaches pour into them into the maw of my massive mind my bulbs glow and my wires hum as I collect sort and memorize every last one of the those facts with a speed befitting the age of the atom a speed vitally necessary for your preservation for the jet speed of incoming enemy bombers can be countered only by such miraculous cal calculative speed such as mine oh there's a bomber coming in that depicts the enemy tracks him down tracks him down and is even in on the kill the radar installation right the enemy bomber coming in yes unbelievable as it sounds 
I retain in my memory every last detail of 30,000 scheduled friendly flights a day. Each of these is given a tracking number preceded by the letter F for friendly. As the progress of these flights registers on radar screens, they de de detail, de detail with the information concerning them that I have stored in my memory. And so the men who operate me know that all is well. But when a flight registers for which I have no memory record, uh oh, here's a baby we have to mark H for hostile. The operator thinks. Then, while they are busy alerting higher headquarters, I really get to work faster than any human brain could ever hope to function. I determine the exact altitude, speed, and direction of the plane or group of planes marked H. But that's not all. In my massive memory, I also contain knowledge of which is interceptors, of which interceptors and guided missiles are best located to do the job and when the counterattack starts it is I sage who flies the interceptors by sending radio impulses that guide the automatic pilots there goes the missiles right I even keep track of the interceptors fuel supply if my memory tells me it is running low I dispatch a second group to take over and so through the miracle of my functions if the occasion should ever arise the interceptors will inevitably accomplish their mission but even as the victors has us will ring in the air boom, boom. I sage shall remain in imperturbable in imperturbable imperturbable I shall keep assembly more I shall keep assembling more data keep committing an endless stream of new facts to my unfailing memory well do I not have good reason to be proud I am not truly am I not truly amazing if not for me the enemy would have attacked long ago because of me they have kept far from our shores beautiful sunset because of me until today only friendly craft have flown over this land because of me only practice interceptors practice interceptor interceptor missions have been dispatched until today but today but today h flight call headquarters the tech sees an h flight look at them scurrying about like frightened mice there is nothing to be concerned about i have registered my registered age flights many times before and always they 
proved to be nothing more than friendly planes that had failed to report in advance that they meant to take the air and consequently did not do dovetail with my memory record hold everything the command decision will be coming through any minute now one of the tech people says let them scurry i imperturbable as a, as always compute the exact altitude speed and direction of the h flight hmm. one of the tech people thinks it's the real thing get the get the closest interceptors groups off the ground the guys on the phone look at the pirates pilots scramble to their planes with their parachutes intact right the real thing the enemy really streaking towards our shores my gear keeps meshing my wires keep humming but now even as i guide the interceptor i shudder with fear as i in envisage the bombs hurling down and all my inter intricate components smash into useless rubble. But how can they be sure it's the real thing? How can these scurrying humans be sure when I, Sage, cannot be sure? I must not let their foolish fears affect me i must keep guiding the interceptor group no sign of things yet here's hoping this is just another dry run one of the pirate pilots says oh look at the jets look their enemy bombers all right the u.s jets are have made eye contact visual contact thank heaven for sage the pilots dive down on the bombers oh look at that missile they're firing their missiles USAF US Air Force Boom. they hit their targets back home everybody mission accomplished the pilots come back look at the smoke of the planes that blew up they knew they were right because of them the enemy that would have reduced me to rubble has been driven back from our shores Phew, that was a close one one of the people says good old sage we have a lot to thank for her let's check this out yes so they have but because of what happened today i know i know now that i was a lot i i have a lot to thank them for too drinking a coffee after all i didn't spring full-blown onto the world it was men working day and night at the lincoln laboratory on the mass institute mass institute of technology who made me that's mit massachusetts institute of technology it is men operating far-flung airborne shipborne and fixed radar stations who feed me the endless stream of facts that i store in my memory i cannot interpret those facts it is men who must decide whether the H flights that register on my screen are actual hostile. 
It is men who must make the command decisions whether or not to intercept. I am still proud, but my reasons have changed. I am proud now because I represent the supreme achievement of mankind's genius in the field of aerial defense. And because I represent man's desire to live in peace, to prevent wars, crack, crackling fires from searching his land. The end. That was a nice read. That was a nice read. I gotta do one thing here, gang. I'm recording this at the same time. My computer gave me a little message saying low on disk space. Oh, I stopped recording it. <laughs> Let's check this out. I checked the disk disk space, but uh, looks like. Uh, I gotta kill one of these downloads. Let's make sure we got enough room going here for the recording to continue. Oh, hold on, let me do this too. this space okay cool we just freed up some this space let's kill this one no that should be enough cool I think we're still recording nice let me make sure we're still got streaming and <laughs> we're still streaming <laughs> that's good okay good stuff that was a very cool read that was a great read Oop. <laughs> That was a very cool read. Let's check this out. We're almost at the end of this gang. Look at this. We got one more page. We got one page story. Okay. Oh, actually, the info I gave at the beginning with uh, Paul Riemann. There is no Paul Riemann story. This is from uh, uh, amazing, uh, Alarming Tales that I was thinking about in Moon Descent. This is the last story, gang. A two pager. What's this back one? America's Atomic Age Airborne. For sure. Let's read both of these. Right? <laughs> Send you for your trip to Disneyland on records. Look at this thing. We'll take a look at that ad after we read these. Fantastic. What a great comic book. What a great read. That was great. That was fantastic, sir. We live stream this and comic stardom is saying that's one of the best stories is <laughs> best the story I ever heard. Really fantastic. Awesome, awesome sea witch. Let's read this one. Do do. standing for for distant early warning in the name distant early warning do so we got sage which is in the previous story what did sage stand for sage stood for sage stood for semi-automatic ground environment sage and now we got do and do is let's check this out do is distant early warning okay so standing for distant early warning is the name of the network of air force radar stations scattered over 3,000 miles of northern canada and alaska northern canada and alaska Some of the stations of this vast radar warning net are located in areas so barren as never to have been inhabited before, even by Eskimos.
the sensitive electronic equipment is housed in plastic domes that do not interfere with radar beams and are strong enough to withstand arctic gear gales up to 200 miles per hour If enemy bombers ever come roaring down the northern route, do will provide us with our earliest warning. Look at all the rockets flying. And so we give our close to home atomic defense units ample time to swing into action. Page 32. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, page 31, page 32. Oh, look at this. America's Atom Age airplane. So that was just a one pager. Do just telling us about the radar system in northern Alaska and Canada. Oh, come on, focus. America's Atom Age airplane. The Convair F 102A, already in operation, is America's trump card when it comes to all weather interception. Those are the planes there. Eh? Jet power. The sleek delta wing jet can tear through the air at 740 miles per hour, and that's 1.3 times faster than sound. I can, it can zoom up, climbing almost vertically to an altitude of 50,000 feet in about five minutes, and that's the present ceiling of all supposed enemy long-range bombers it can fire uh, standard rockets Falcon air to air missiles or atomic rockets and yet the convey convair f 102a is is only one small cog in the vast machinery that comprises our country's atomic defenses Bam. it's like a little one page one 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 page info pages really about US military basically propaganda really right that's cool we read the whole thing and there was only the advertisements in this there's the front back the back page let's look at this ad too hey kids <laughs> after after all that after all that military war atomic talk and everything on the back of the back page it's hey kids send for your trip to Disneyland on records <laughs> you gotta be kidding me check this out in one big package full color aerial map of Disneyland and five five seventy seventy eight rpm records dollar twenty five <laughs> crazy <laughs> that is trippy Re relive time and time again a trip through the magic realm of Walt Disney's world famous Disneyland with this one package kit a giant illustrated map in full color on heavy stock over three and a half feet wide plus five seven hundred seventy eight uh, reps per minute rpm records 
that describe and narrate your trip through this entire land of fantasy, including Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, Frontierland, Adventureland. The ideal gift brought to you by the combined talents of Disney, the master of make-believe, and Mattel, the most famous name in musical toys. The giant illustrated aerial map stands up by itself and can be viewed by several people at the same time. It's just like looking down from the advantage point of a helicopter while the records play on, whisking you away in fantasy to a personally to a personally conducted tour of Disneyland. Truly a most wonderful yet inexpensive gift that will bring endless hours of enjoyment. Order several and keep them on hand for those special occasions. <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> Crazy. And this and take that. And the and the beauty of it is, and the beauty of it is, this is approved by the Comic Code Authority <laughs> to deliver you, deliver you, what did it, what did it say? Deliver you uh, standards of morality and good taste required by the code. <laughs> awesome. Just pure awesome. What a fantastic read. And toy soldiers at the back cover that we can buy. And an ant farm at the back of the front cover. What a great read, gang. What a great read. That was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed. I loved it. I loved it. I've been aching to read this for so long. So long. Let's throw this back in the back in the cover. Uh, so that's the what is this? Adam H. Combat number one by St. John and published in 1958. Okay. And it's approved by the Comic Code Authority with a little Disneyland advertisements on the back cover after we just went through a few stories of death and destruction all around with the atomic weapons and uh, very cool, very cool uh, artificial intelligence story. That was fantastic. That's from the what do you call it uh, terminator a uh, skynet right i think that's what elder god was talking about mentioned in the live stream let's put this back and the odds are i'm not going to bring this out of this bag again unless i put it in mylar or something because the cover is still attached but it's getting sketchy it's getting sketchy okay gang i'm going to go back to the chat because we are live streaming this let me put this up because we don't get the glare and i'm going to turn on the chat and uh turn my screen back on super fun read super fun read <laughs> the machines are coming the machines were coming in 1958 awesome fun fun supposed to remind you to raid oh are we gonna raid who are we gonna raid even kids know better numbers are are better crazy that was a fun read gang who are we supposed to raid elder god where are we gonna go raid who are we raiding thanks for being here gang by the way that was fantastic super fun read how do we do for time our timing's not bad just a little over two hours spider-man is wanting a raid okay cool let me grab his uh uh yeah gaming anar anarchism fantastic x how are you doing i didn't know you were here but it's up to you after reading it it went from a 9.8 to a 9.4 <laughs> it went from a good minus and stayed a good minus <laughs> all right it went from a good to a good like it's it, i wouldn't i wouldn't grade this any lower 
I would say it's a good. I would say even it's a two two point five. Tell you the truth, the inside is beautiful. The pages were fantastic. The color was amazing, right? The color was amazing, right? And the story was phenomenal. The what do you call it? The artificial intelligence one. I I sage was a great story. Chromag, what's a Chromag? I don't know what a Chromag is, brother. Elder God, fun. That was super fun, man. That was crazy fun. I appreciate your willingness to use comics for the original purpose. I ga gaming anarchism, one hundred percent. Neanderthal, is that what it is? Oh, Chromagnum, man. That's right, Chromag, Neanderthal. I gotta, I gotta slowly. I'm gonna be able to decipher your code, Elder God. As far as using comic books for their original purpose, dude, 100%. Comic books are meant to be read, right? Even though I'm a collector, I collect comic books. I didn't buy my first graded comic book I bought was I bought it because there was a lot of talk about it. So I, I think like four years ago, after 30 plus years of collecting, right? Did you put that uh, uh, fragment back in the back? Oh, good reminder. Thank you very much, Pope. Here it is. Here it is. I forgot about it. There's the little fragment. It's got to go back. It's got to go in. Oh, come here. It's got to go in. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, older books like this. These are the bomb. These are. And for me, I don't care about the grade. If the story isn't, can, there's a little, there's a little bit of fragment here too. Let's put that back in too. Doop. And here's a little fragment here. Little guy. Let's put that guy in too. Doop. Nice, nice. Let's do this. Let's tape this up. Nice. Put on a new tape. nice the lockdown messiah how are you doing i still read old comics even during lockdowns yep yep got to keep it as whole as we can <laughs> for sure kids that read comics in real time went to vietnam yeah i have a million comic books oh pope I don't have that many. I got a few thousand. I got a few thousand. Grand Prix. Hello, hello. I'm just gonna sit on my porch and enjoy this. Love the content she showed. Awesome Grand Prix. I, I I hope you enjoyed it. That was we read through the whole thing. <laughs> Nineteen really drones, uh artificial intelligence, uh talking video conferencing in real time watching attacks in real time right in 1958 while during that time majority of the population was still trying to wrap their head around the nuclear age that we had just entered the atomic age right phenomenal unbelievable right I wonder if the US Department of Defense had any hand in funding comics like this to push their propaganda. Uh, gaming anarchism, for sure they did. I've read that through part of history. I've looked into the history of comic books and the United States government, just like now that they're funding Hollywood movies and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, newspapers, what's that? Uh, Hummingbird, uh, Project Hummingbird, where they put CIA operatives in all major news outlets and for sure that's one of the reasons i think the comic code uh came to be as well the other than trying to control the population and their thoughts uh the u.s government 100 percent was involved in creating comic books there's a lot of propaganda in comic books we've read comic books where they're selling war bonds right from the 1940s and stuff uh, jingle jangle comic one of the first comics we read um was in the early 1940s i believe um during uh during the 
during World War II, right? Remote control missiles, Graham, 100 remote control missiles. How many people in 1958 had their could even imagine talking visually, right? Like this in real time. We need a COVID-19. <laughs> it, it will be coming. Uh, the lockdown Messiah for sure it will be coming if it's not already out there right I think reading comics are a must but I also like to preserve my favorites by having them graded uh, Pope there like if this was if this comic was let's assume I paid through through like I paid a mint for this that this comic was graded like if this comic was graded at even seven like i bought this graded at good minus right so 1.5 great i would give this a two 2.5 tell you the truth i wouldn't give it a 1.5 right so i bought this for uh 930 us right if this was graded at let's say seven or eight it would have cost how much would it go for 500 600 700 I, I don't know how many graded there are of this there isn't too many graded i looked at this a long time ago uh, i think there's only like there's less than 10 graded comics of adam h combat and i think the highest one was like an eight like if you're hitting eight on this and there's only one graded at eight on this that thing's going for over a thousand easy right if this was an eight graded uh we would still read it because it's me right but the grade might kick down it would have cost us a couple of hundred bucks to read that comic right uh but some of the comics that are extremely high grade for sure preserve them for history's sake so i don't mind that right but for me i live in canada and trying to send books to be graded by the grading companies that are in the states it's it takes a fair bit and it costs a fair bit of money right 1950 born kid reads comics in 1958 then in 1969 is off to vietnam elder god yeah crazy yeah crazy graham i disagree a better way to preserve these kinds of books is to scan them into the internet and then seal it up don't hoard cultural artifacts it's not about hoarding it's about investing graham right and there are websites out there that you can read comic books i've read some golden age uh and pre-golden age and silver age comic books on uh, there's one website that i go to uh, where you can read these comic books they've archived thousands of comic books so yeah for sure i agree and for me one of the ways to preserve this is is reading them and uh, for me this is a part of my preservation technique for comic books right man i hope my children can make it uh make it to comics the like for me i exposed our family the my cousins to comic books and they've read comic books gaming anarchism i know the cia funded modern art artists and some magazines during the cold war now they fund things like call of duty and that amazon series about invading venezuela yeah yeah head pov thank you very much for the raid hello everyone hope you're all doing well we just did a comic book reading of a 1958 comic book of atomic atom age combat right and as far as the gaming industry goes 100 percent the cia funds uh, shooter games i've in the 1990s uh i had a few people that i hung out with with the gaming group then they worked for gaming companies and some of them were like dude uh we're selling our souls to the devil but the pay is amazing right yeah <laughs> cool man. here 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 to more <laughs> hi everyone i'm just catching up with the chat by the way just scrolling down i like to collect the cbldf books uh the comic book uh, legal defense fund books yeah pope i have some of those 
and I highly recommend if you want to defend comic books go to the comic book legal defense funds and support them I have in the past when I've had funds it helps comic creators and says F you to censorship 100% and I'm 100% anti-censorship awesome raid comic books comic books <laughs> it's people coming in from another channel that like our like our work here and so they pop in salty durian oh what's your favorite comic book my favorite comic book my favorite comic book i don't know if i have a favorite comic. i have favorites that i read one of my f most favorite story arcs is lobo the last zarnian it's a four issue miniseries that came out in the uh, early 1990s it is absolutely phenomenal one of my favorite comic book stories of batman is legends of the dark knight batman the venom story arc absolutely fantastic yeah we got raided hello i was recommended to raid you by a person named javino you know him i, I don't know maybe possibly <laughs> there's so many names i'm trying to learn and thank you for the raid uh head pov appreciate it appreciate it and thank you javino for recommending the raid here here for head here for that. i think vinyl and comics are like that boss fight that is <laughs> it's impossible to die vinyls are b okay favorite arcs favorite arcs uh okay valiant's uh, unity crossover from the 1990s was absolutely phenomenal okay frank miller's Dare daredevil run was absolutely phenomenal v for vendetta alan moore's uh swamp thing is absolutely phenomenal uh the 2012 relaunch of valiant comics harbinger is absolutely phenomenal um archer and armstrong was absolutely phenomenal standalone comic uh, fall of Har uh book of death fall of harbinger and fall of bloodshot were two of the most outstanding standalone comics i've ever read as i said lobo the last zarnian infinity war uh infinity gauntlet and the build up to it from silver surfer kicking into the infinity gauntlet was absolutely phenomenal everything ec put out pre-comic book related to horror science fiction and crime was absolutely phenomenal books like this absolutely phenomenal from the 1940s and 50s that are uh that are historical artifacts there's so many amazing comic books out there there's so much amazing stuff out there right gaming and anarchism so, wow that's a fascinating tidbit about developing video games for the cia i'm sure the pay is amazing the pay was amazing they even moved some gamers to california at the time they i don't know if they moved but the gamers that i knew in vancouver they picked up jobs in san francisco and silicon valley because cia is made seriously huge operations there right uh with the technocrats and whatnot and they were making games uh and the games were funded by the cia by the pentagon really uh, i wouldn't say cia per se but the war machine right batman the batman the cult elder god batman the cult 100 percent oh batman the cult so good so good right superman was by oh um grant morrison's superman amazing amazing superman was my thing for a while until i finally got into that whole shield hydra arc nice elder god i have seen him in chicho's chat have you okay cool head pov go god what was his name govina govin hey where'd it go uh gavino i'll try to remember the name gavino and thank him for sending uh you and your gang our way yes they're the daredevil daredevil's fantastic really and daredevil's underrated uh, well it's not as much now because of the netflix tv series that came out fantastic tv series right punisher's got some great story arcs dark uh punisher max was absolutely amazing with barracuda kicking in 
uh, that was so good that was so good right uh hell hellblazer one of the most phenomenal comic book series ever created hellblazer right at par with sandman uh, but i personally prefer hellblazer well they're at par hellblazer and sandman absolutely phenomenal right justice league dark is awesome really i haven't read the justice league dark stuff the recent stuff anyway V for Vendetta, Watchmen, Killing Joe, Chronicles of Wormwood. I haven't read the Chronicles of Wormwood. Dark Knight Returns. I've read the Killing Joke, Watchmen, Vendetta, uh, Dark Knight for sure. Hello, by the way. Hello, Andy. How are you doing? Grand Prix. Aliens versus Predator versus Judge Dredd. Wait a second. There's a triple one? Aliens versus Predator is fantastic. Predator is fantastic. Alien is fantastic. From the. 1980s 1990s was really good thank you for the awesome read got to go feed the mini me it's steak and spinach night nice stay stay cool guys and keep reading awesome comics you too pope and thank you for popping in i hope you enjoyed and enjoy the steak nice gave me an anarchism i'm reading a comic called vinland saga right now it's a viking uh revenge story and the art is amazing oh nice who wrote it uh, gaming anarchism yeah salty durian hellblazer one of my most one of my favorite series of all time without a doubt a trans metropolitan what is amazing series what an amazing series trans metropolitan dude I grew up reading uh, that it's sick dude I grew up reading that it's sick. gaming anarchism uh, Vinland Saga I don't know Vinland Saga think Dark Horse Comics made it Dark Horse Comics made it Vinland Saga <laughs> Elder God save, save me some steak Vinland Saga is by uh, Mako Yukimura really Mac so Japanese artist Mako Yukimura it's a Japanese comic yeah oh I don't know this cool thank you for the recommendation if you're if you happen to be on our discord post your recommendations in our comic book folder uh, that we have because uh, people are sharing uh, nice recommendations for comic books there and comic book news and pics and stuff can do later guys awesome I definitely recommend it the char development is amazing the character the char development the character development is amazing really dark horse made yeah dark horse made alien versus predator versus judge red i think yeah i have the original uh dark horse comics presents with uh aliens and predator and i have the predators first few ish well it was a four issue miniseries so i have that series oh thanks elder god okay i will join the discord awesome gaming anarchism fun should we call the stream gang let's call the stream gang wait alien versus predator versus judge red is a thing okay yeah salty durian i i didn't know it is there all three of them together <laughs> like is there all three of them together aliens versus predator i have aliens i have predator i have judge dread i have not the original from the 2000 ad stuff but the later stuff Raid Spider-Man. Raid. I gotta grab the Spider-Man's name. Hold on. Let's grab Spider-Man's name. Where's Spider-Man's name? Where's Spider-Man? Oh. Oh, there he is. Let me grab his thing. Spider-Man fan dude. Okay, gang. We're gonna do a raid. There's a crossover comic by Dark Horse, I guess. Wow, really? Okay. I'm going to type this in, gang. Raid Spider-Man. There's a crowd. Da, 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 okay. Let's call the stream. And, uh, oh, that's sick. I looked it up. The crossover was written by uh, John Lehman. Really? Cool. I had no idea. I had no idea there was one crazy crazy and uh i'm just gonna finish off with my little ending and then we're gonna raid spider-man okay 
as far as uh, who I am and by the way thank you for being here gang oh yeah and if you're into mathematics everybody tomorrow we're doing a math drop and tutoring session from 2 p.m. Uh, PST PDT Pacific Coast uh, Canada my time from the west coast of Canada so from 2 to 4 I'm making myself available to help people out if they want to do math okay math tutoring basically and usually we have a bunch of people that show up that love mathematics that help people out if they have questions because I mainly cover high school mathematics and there are people that come into our chat mask of Raven Odmic, uh, Catholic traditionalist and there's a couple other people that come in that are their mathematics is more powerful than mine so sometimes people have questions that uh, they help them out so it's sort of a time we put aside uh, as sort of a community to make sure that uh, people that need help in mathematics have at least one place they can come to to ask for help uh, and just talk mathematics right because mathematics the language of mathematics is absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and powerful right so if you're into it tomorrow from 2 to 4 Pacific time Pacific West Coast uh, Canada we're gonna do a math drop-in tutoring session aside from that if you want to know who I am I'm on patreon patreon.com backslash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this project I don't put anything behind paywalls I share everything that I can and you can just follow and if you know you like the content after a while what we're doing and what my thesis is which is really math centric I'm building sort of math curriculum linking it up everywhere uh, and I do sort of explain what my thesis is on my patreon homepage as well patreon is a good place to be okay we are live streaming this on twitch uh, twitch backslash chicho live c h o c h c h y c h o l i v e if you want to participate in these chats live this is where you want to be at okay I do announce these streams on Twitter gabs minds VK and Elo. okay those are sort of the platforms I announce things on uh, so you can follow the work there and I do share additional information there I am recording these on a external sound mic and we'll be uploading a lot of the content to SoundCloud we just started that in the last couple of weeks as podcasts so if people want to just listen to the audio uh, you can listen to the audio on SoundCloud okay and that's soundcloud.com backslash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o and the videos will be uploaded to YouTube and BitChute everything goes on BitChute sensors permitting uh, a lot of things go on YouTube and we have 900 videos 900 plus videos on YouTube now and if you do want to support this project uh, becoming a member uh, on YouTube is a fantastic way to support this project or following on Twitch and subscribing on Twitch and whatnot have a nice night uh, my guy how you you as well had POV thank you for the raid and thank you for being here uh, and I'll definitely keep in mind to thank uh, Givoni I'll know the name when I see it uh, in our next stream when he pops by peace Chicho have a good evening catch you tomorrow catch you guys tomorrow gang mods thank you for taking care of business okay and thank you for the feedback fell what friend I'll be back for the tutoring awesome salty durian to spider-man we go okay gang we're going to spider-man I think I have to wait until we say raid now and then I can stop recording right oh I gotta raid now okay